This is a True Blue Extra. I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV football analyst Blaine Fowler. All right, let's go way back. Back just after they got electricity when you were in fall camp. And, before uh, face masks. Before face masks. It was all leather. It's amazing that I was able to keep this <laughs> yeah. without wearing a face mask for all those years. And we time. don't even know how many surgeries. But um, <laughs> what, what, what do you remember taking the field as a, as a new guy on campus, wanting to go out, not only impress the coaches, but impress everybody else? And you had McMahon out there. You had Steve Young out there, Bosco. Well, McMahon was one of my idols, so to be standing right next to him was cool. And, and Jim was always really good to me. I remember one of the first practices I was out there, the quarterbacks are rotating through and the receivers are rotating through. And Danny Plater was an all-conference receiver. And I rotated up and Dan Plater was up and he looked down the line at me and went, Pfft. and then he was big time. He put the guy in front of me, he put, put the guy in front of him it's like, right. I, this guy's not throwing to me. So I, I felt bad about it. I threw to the guy, I rotated back again. Dan Plater was up again and he did it again. The next time Jim McMahon <laughs> came up, Dan Plater, came up and Jim goes hey Dan stay there I want you to run a post and then he went Blaine come throw this post to Dan and he put me in nice. to throw to Danny Plater and I thought it sent a great message he was a senior he was an all-american he had all these records but he cared about the the poor freshman and it just made me relax that was the the time I thought okay well, if Jim accepts me, then everybody's going to accept me and things are going to be fine. But I was nervous, and he took my nerves away. Well, let's go uh, fast forward a couple of years, and now you and Robbie go into camp to battle for the starting job. Uh, and, in, and in contrast, what happened with you and in that experience to what the four guys battling to be the number two guy this year behind Riley Nelson, you go out there, and every single day do you feel like, I've got to be brilliant? to win this thing? Yeah, you do, especially in spring ball. You know, we, we were battling in spring ball because once you go into fall, you hope that you have somebody that's established. Right. And so you do, you think about every play. And uh, Mike Holmgren was our quarterback's coach at the time, and he was keeping a ledger, basically, of every throw we made. Did we make the proper read? Did we make the right throw and giving us a grade? And at the end of spring ball, Robbie and I were dead even. And so we, we kind of waited through the summer, and they decided to go with Rob in the fall. And, th and that's a tough thing then to say, okay, I battled, I was that close, but now I've got to take this role that I've got to be supportive of the team. I've got to be ready to play because yeah. the starter could go down any minute. And, and that's the mentality these guys that are battling for number two right now in fall camp have to take is they're not the guy. Riley's the guy, but they have to prepare as if they're the guy because at any game, in the middle of a big game, Riley could get hurt. People take shots at quarterbacks, and you've got to be able to come in and carry that team. All right, here's a scenario for you. Let's say uh, Riley gets hurt. Mm -hmm. If he gets hurt early in the season, you go with James Lark, who's a senior, uh, to go the rest of the way. If Riley gets banged up middle toward the backside of the season, do you go, all right, Taysom Hill, uh, you're the guy because the season ahead in 2013 is the toughest schedule in school history. I, I think they go with whoever gives them the best chance to win. I know that's a kind of a padding, but I think it really that, is. I, I expect know, a little but, more. But here's what I'm going to say. Right now, that's James Lark. He's been in the system. He knows what's going on. He can run this offense. People forget what a big recruit he was when he signed with BYU. Yeah. BYU chose Him Lark over, over Riley Nelson right. at the time. I would love to see James Lark with an opportunity to play a little bit more because I think his skill set is big time. Um, he's got an NFL type arm. He's he's a good athlete. Um, he's a he's not quite the runner that Riley Nelson is, but he's a much better athlete than Jay Keeps was. So he's maybe somewhere in between those two. And I think given the opportunity, he would perform well. I think he gives him the best chance to win if Riley goes down. So your advice to Cougar fans who always want to get a taste of what's coming is just hey, be, be patient. Hill will get his time, yep. even if he runs out for the first time uh, for the season opener next. That, September. That'll be BYU's running a lot of guys out for the first time without a lot of reps, and so I, I think that if you can get him some playing time, great. But if not, it's not it's not a big thing to worry about. And I think that Lark gives you the best chance to win this season. Washington State's going to get better because of their new head coach. The question is, how fast can they get better? Because they haven't been very good. But in Coach Leach's system, it takes a while. And uh, he got into spring, so now he's got fall. They're underway just like BYU. But that home opener will have more questions on BYU's the opponent's side of the ball than the Cougars will have. Uh, what do you think? I mean, you, you can watch film of, you know, Texas Tech when Mike was there, um, when he was at Oklahoma. So you have an understanding of what they do offensively, and you can look at their personnel, but you can't put it all together. It's tough for BYU and an opener to know what to expect. 
where, where Mike Leach has to make great strides in that program is defensively. They just haven't been very good defensively. They were pretty good offensively last year. I did their game at San Diego State last right. year. They have some skill players at wide receiver, NFL caliber guys. They've got a senior quarterback coming back this year with experience. I would expect them to move the football and be pretty good offensively, but they've got to make big strides defensively because in the past several years, they just haven't been able to stop people. And I think BYU's offense has enough veteran leadership and talent coming back that Washington State's going to have a hard time stopping him. Yeah, it'll be something. It'll be something here in, what, three weeks from yeah. Thursday? Be fun. Yeah, all right. Well, for Blaine Fowler, I'm Dave McCann. This has been a True Blue Extra, something you can see uh, every week at BYUtv.org. We dot org? We dot com. I think BYUtvsports.com. No, are we dot org? Yeah, we're dot, we're dot com. We're dot com. You know what? We don't, run that. we don't run that part of it, so we don't know. Yeah, but now we know. We, we don't run anything. Yeah, we just like show to think up. we do. We just show up. All right. See you on BYU TV. Thank <laughs> you.